Congratulations and thank you. To all of you celebrating milestone wedding anniversaries this year, I offer you my heartfelt congratulations. What a happy occasion and what a great cause for celebration. I also wish to thank you for being a sign of Christ's love in the world. Uh, we honor you today, we honor your commitment, we honor your love. Congratulations and thank you. Marriage and family are for us a, a storehouse of, of memories and, and treasures. And to serve sort of one of my own memories, I have two paintings hanging in my residence that were done by my grandmother. Uh, in the early years of my life, when I was really young and uh, before my grandmother died, uh, she lived with us in, in our home. And one of my real early memories is my grandmother painting one of those paintings that's now hanging in my home. It was a, a real privilege to, to have uh, Grandma with us. And I am very grateful to my parents for making the sacrifice to make that happen because that wasn't always easy for them. But growing up with you know, Grandma in the house, I learned respect and honor for the elderly. I learned respect and honor for, for those who hold that wisdom of years with them. And in this light, I, I have a growing concern because it seems that in our own society, we are losing more and more and more a sense of respect for the elderly. We are losing more and more and more a sense of respect for those who hold the wisdom of years with them. And we also see in our country a, a, a greater tendency toward euthanasia. The euthanasia movement is growing, it is gaining steam, and it is coming right down the track. And once we have lost respect and esteem for the elderly, once we've lost that respect and esteem for those who hold that wisdom of years, isn't it just a few more steps when euthanasia can become more and more widespread? This is why I'm grateful for my parents and for my family. Because therein I, I learned respect for those who hold the wisdom of years. And in this light, I think we can see very, very clearly that marriage and family are the foundation on which we build a culture of life. Marriage and family are the foundation on which we build a culture of life. This was certainly my experience growing up. And, and let's start with, with marriage, that foundation of the family, to show why this is true. Why marriage and family are the foundation on which we build a culture of life. In our first reading today from the book of Genesis, when Adam first sees Eve, he exclaims, this one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. He looks upon Eve and he sees in her someone in whom he delights. He looks upon Eve and he sees in her 
a companion. And is this not, is this delight, isn't this what a man and woman see in each other that moves them to make the commitment of the marriage covenant? They look upon each other, they see someone in whom they delight, they see a companion, and out of that love they make these promises to each other. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. From this initial delight that Adam sees comes this commitment a commitment to a love that is faithful, a commitment to a love that is unconditional in good times and in bad, a commitment to a love that is permanent. And is this not the very characteristics of the love of Christ himself? A love that is ever faithful, a love that is unconditional, and a love that is permanent. And it, it is this commitment that a husband and wife make to each other, a commitment to grow in this kind of love, that is the foundation to build a culture of life. Because in the midst of a love that is faithful, in the midst of a love that is unconditional, in the midst of a love that is permanent, we learn what the respect of the dignity of each and every human life means. From the moment of conception to natural death. It is this kind of love, faithful, unconditional and permanent that teaches us the value and dignity of every human life. Now as you know who have you who have reached these milestone anniversaries know that Making this commitment and saying these words is much easier than living it. And there are times when difficulties arise. But you also know that in embracing these difficulties and working through them, love grows stronger and deeper. For we hear also in our second reading today that perfection comes through suffering, or, or perfection comes through embracing the cross. Perfection comes through embracing and walking through all these difficulties, knowing that the Lord Jesus is there with us and walking with us. And let me give just a, a couple suggestions which you probably all know very well, on how we can walk through some of these difficulties that arise, and how we can become perfect, how love can be perfected therein. Three suggestions. Apologize, compromise, and sympathize. Three suggestions. Apologize, compromise, and sympathize. First of all, apologize. Arguments and disagreements are bound to arise. As you know, Pope Francis jokingly said last week, plates will fly. But Pope Francis also said, 
light of that. Always end, don't let the day end without making peace with each other. Apologize. Disagreements, arguments are bound to arise. But don't let the day end without making peace with each other. Apologize. So that's the first. Second, compromise. If a husband always gets his way, or if a wife always gets her way, that's really a recipe for disaster. However, in, in compromise, for, for that really to happen, both the husband and the wife have to sacrifice something for the sake of the other. For compromise to happen, both the husband and the wife have to sacrifice something for the sake of the other. But if a husband knows that his wife is really willing to give up something for him, and if a, a wife knows that her husband is really giving, willing to give up something for her, doesn't that give witness to the commitment of unconditional love? Doesn't that give witness to a love that is permanent? Doesn't that give witness to the depths of the commitment that two people make to each other if they're both willing to sacrifice something for the sake of the other. So, first, apologize. Second, compromise. And third, sympathize. You know, our, our word, you know, sympathy, really means, if we get, get at the roots of that word, it means feeling together or, 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 or feeling with each other. You know, so sympathy or to sympathize really means to, to feel together or to feel with each other. Now we know very well that a husband and wife always feel the same. Well, we know that's really not the case. Okay, so, so what, what, does it, what does it really mean to, you know, to sympathize or to feel with each other or uh, to feel together? Yeah, I, I think we can talk about it in this sense. First of all, emotions are just something that happens. It's sort of a spontaneous interior reaction to different situations or persons or happenings. Um, emotions just happen. Our feelings, our emotions are morally neutral. Emotions or feelings are morally neutral. They're neither good nor, nor are they bad. You know, for example, anger is, is not morally bad. It just happens. The problem is what we tend to do when we become angry. That's where the sin comes in. But just the feelings themselves are morally neutral. So there's nothing wrong with the way a, a wife may feel about something. There's nothing wrong with the way a husband might feel about something. It's first of all, just to recognize that feelings are there, the feelings happen. And, and because feelings happen, you know, we don't really have control over how we feel, they, they just are. To sympathize or, or to feel with each other means being willing to talk about how you are feeling and really trying to understand how the other person is feeling. That takes a lot of work. And you know, we don't like to talk about our feelings a whole lot, especially guys. And if you're like me, you have the German gene. And those of us who have the German gene, we don't have emotions, and if we have them, we make them behave. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work to really talk 
talk about how we're feeling to someone else. And it's a lot of hard work to try to understand how someone else is feeling. But that's what's really at the roots of sympathizing, or to, to feel with each other, to try to come to that understanding as best as we can. But once again, if, if a wife really knows her husband is trying to understand how she feels, or if a husband really knows his wife is trying to understand how he feels, that's another foundation on which to build a deeper commitment, a deeper understanding, a deeper relationship, and a more vibrant living out of the marriage promise. Marriage and family are the foundation on which to build a culture of life. And this is so because of the, the very nature of, of, of married love, which is meant to be a representation of the love of Christ. A love that is faithful, a love that is unconditional, a love that is permanent. And so should it be any surprise that last week Pope Francis said that family is the most beautiful thing God created. So on this day, we celebrate your anniversary. Congratulations, and thank you. And let us continue to pray that the grace of God may work through you and through your marriages, that you can be conduits of God's love and God's grace to permeate society with the dignity of life, and that through your example and your prayer, we may have more and more strong families and married lives.